thanks everyone for joining us this morning. Um, again, our our topic here is how to determine where to invest your communication budget. That could mean a lot of different things. And um, the, the, the context here for us is that um, kind of as, you know, my background as well in, in um, you know, in working in different healthcare organizations and such is that, and I'm, and I'm sure regardless of what your position is in your organization, whether or not you're in a marketing or a communications role or, a, or, or you know, in a leadership role or whatever it might be, that there are more priorities than there are resources, okay? And, um, and resources, of course, doesn't always just mean time. And, and, um, and when we look at communications, that can mean a lot of different things too, as we know that can mean anything from internal communications to what we're doing to um, develop relationships with our providers or referral sources or what have you. And kind of the, the, the overall point of what we're going to just overview today is that having some kind of a, a disciplined approach of deciding as a professional uh, what you're going to focus on and sometimes what you're not going to focus on. So, you know, kind of, again, kind of talking about my background, I, I just remember that, you know, it just, whatever the, the squeakiest, squeakiest wheel was, you know, um, whatever, you know, the priority of the day sort of thing. And, and you end up being just so frenzied that you're like, you get done with the day and you're like, okay, what did I do? <laughs> you know, and I'm sure, I'm sure many of you can, can relate to that. So, you know, it's not a, not a perfect situation, but I, you know, at, at the end here, I just want to hopefully give you some, some maybe some affirmation, maybe some guidelines, maybe some ways of, of, um, you know, staying focused and disciplined in what we do. So what we're going to talk about today in this webinar is reviewing a, a planning process and who to engage in this effort. Uh, we'll talk about a planning process here, but what's more important is that you have one that works for your organization. That's the that's the takeaway on this. It doesn't have to be the one that we're putting here. So, um, and we're going to talk about um, you know forming measurable business and communication goals and what does that mean and what does that look like. Um, and then from there, as I've kind of talked about a little bit, is once you do that, is deciding, you know, I've listed here services, but it doesn't always have to be in that context. It could be deciding what activities warrant focus. You know, this is kind of focused on if we're marketing or communicating service lines. Um, but this could mean anything from just, again, where do we place our emphasis? And then um, really just discovering what, what are some of those necessary components uh, for you to really implement uh, those plans. So we'll start this out um, with a poll question. And I know, um, so the question is, how confident do you feel you are, you are in developing business and communication goals and priorities for your organization as part of your annual communications plan? And please choose one option. Looks like we're missing just a little bit of participation on the poll here. If you wouldn't mind taking a couple of seconds to fill that out, I'll give it another 15 seconds and then I will display the results here. Good. Well, we have we have some confident people and we got some people in the middle. So let's see. Let's see if we can move those people in the middle up a little bit. So this is good. It's always just kind of a good to know in terms of uh, in terms of where we are. So so thank you for for doing that. All right. Okay. So just kind of a little bit of an overview here. So uh, bear with me here, but just kind of some background is when we talk about a communications plan, um, it it means that we our communications that aligns with a strong strategic plan. And then overall, that generates a cohesive strategy to reach your goals. So, you know, in, in simple terms, you know, oftentimes when maybe I'm working with an organization and we'll kind of have these conversations about where, um, where is that organization going in its communication? And there just has to be this, you know, really a clear vision from the top of the organization. And we're going to talk, you'll just kind of hear me repeat this message a couple times in the conversation about how important it is 
to have agreement and alignment and consensus from the leadership team of your organization, because without that, um, you're, you're really not going to be as successful because the, the idea is whether or not it's whatever communications you're doing, you have to really have that buy-in from the top and that support from the top. So, but a lot of times, you know, in looking at, you know, if you're at the seat from a communications level to just to make sure and do everything you can to um, make sure that you have access to that strategic plan, because just to be, you know, a strategic thinker in your organization, regardless of what level you are, is the most value you're going to add is looking at the business and the communication goals of your organization and forming recommendations from there. So where do you start? As again, I kind of talked about the strategic plan, but actually even before that, and sometimes it's part of the strategic plan, but it's taken a quick look back. Hang on one second. I just need to move this screen over here so I can see what I'm doing here. Okay. So it's it's taking a look at the past as well. So what that means is looking at things like, you know, at volumes and and looking at data. And that, you know, again, it all depends, but you know, really, for instance, having a clear understanding of you know, where are your patient satisfaction scores? What are your quality scores? Um, you know, what uh, do, do we know what kind of um, community perception that we might have in the organization, either through a formal study or, or anecdotally? What do we know about um, our physician relationships? Have we done any kind of even informal or formal sort of way of establishing what, what those relationships look like in a, in a way to kind of measure them? Have we done employee engagement uh, assessments you know you know what our baseline is um, those types of things so because this is kind of the the basis for what we'll talk about here in a minute but you know it's forming goals and how do you form a goal if you don't know where you are or where you've been you know you gotta you gotta have again what we kind of call a baseline I know it's basic stuff but sometimes we get so busy in what we're doing that we don't really we don't really think about that and so as we talk about, you know, how we're going to, you know, be leaders in our, in our organization, you know, when we're understanding that strategic plan and we're understanding where we need to be as an organization, it helps us to really form uh, those goals. So, all right, one sec here. Okay, so I kind of talked a little bit about this idea of forming a consensus, and I want to just um, emphasize that just a little bit more here. So here's here's what I mean by this: is that. Um, and I'm just going to speak from experience here when I've been in healthcare organizations where, you know, I could go down the hall and someone will say, you know, need a brochure on this, or I really need to do a, and I can turn the hall and there'll be, there's, I need a communication, I need a brochure on this, or I need a video on this, or we really need to do some education to this audience. And you're thinking, well, okay, I guess those are the priorities because those are the people that talk the loudest or those, are the, you know, and, and when you form this plan that we'll talk more about a little bit here, and I know that, you know, everything is not perfect and black and white. It does, you know, things come up all the time, but in order to be effective is that you're coming and you're presenting, maybe you're part of the leadership team already, but overall as a leadership team in your organization, you have a clear understanding of what are our goals, and in a, and we'll talk about here in a, in, a, in a way, but in a specific way, because then as we have new opportunities or new uh, that that we're going to consider, we always weigh them against. Okay, what are the goals that we placed in our communications plan? Do they match what we have in our strategic plan? Oftentimes in organizations, you know, just a you know, it seems a little bureaucratic, but when there are requests for things that oftentimes what we see is successful organizations will have some kind of an online form or something like that. And when a requester requests information, he or she needs to specifically state what are the goals and how does it align with a strategic plan. And those are all things that, um, you know, having that buy-in from the top. So then as, you know, whatever role that you're in, as we have challenges in our organization where people say, well, I really want to do that, or I really think we should do that regardless, then if your leadership team owns that process, you can take that back to them and say, okay, I'm getting some requests to kind of go in this direction or to, you know, um, we really need to place more emphasis in this area. Now, this wasn't in our communications plan or this wasn't in our strategic plan, 
Um, so I'm thinking it's not as much of a priority, but can I have some guidance? And it allows uh, folks that are in communications uh, roles to really feel like they're not out on an island. But again, that that um, just like an organization owns your strategic plan, um, it should also own your uh, communications plan as well. So, and bear with me, because I know we have different folks from different backgrounds. Um, so some of this is going to be maybe fairly familiar to you, but either way, it's it's a good reminder. So as we talk about objective setting, you know, you've probably heard of the, the SMART acronym, but um, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. So there can be some really broad goals that really don't mean anything because they're not, they don't meet these, these criteria. So a little bit more specifically, oftentimes when we look at goals, um, I like to kind of break it down into a couple different categories. Uh, one that I kind of call business goals and one that I call communication goals. So, so the business goals are things that you would, you know, would expect like, you know, kind of the, you know, things that maybe your CFO is going to talk more about, but okay, we want to, we want to increase our patient volumes, we want to increase our um, overall our market share in the organization or our profitability as an organization, or it might be improve our patient satisfaction scores or our quality scores or, or include, uh, in, increase our, um, you know, uh, patient engagement scores, whatever it might be. But these are things that, for the most part, there are going to be numbers that are, are associated with them. There are going to be baselines. And so, um, and then as we talk about communication goals, again, business goals and communication goals aren't mutually exclusive, but communication goals kind of focus more on measuring maybe the performance of a particular communications technique. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, did we have X amount of people attend a community session? Did we have so many people engage with us on the website? How many people did we have following us on social media? Um, those types of things that are that are communication goals that, you know, there's a correlation. You know, those two in order to know um, whether or not we're effective. So bear with me on this. I know this is kind of some like maybe dry stuff, but it's but it's important because all of these things are really, you know, important in terms of helping us as as leaders to determine Okay, we got all these priorities, you know, and um, how how do we say yes? And sometimes how do we say no? And so, you know, when I was talking about those, you know, forming of those objectives, a lot of things to think about. Okay, and again, um, depends on, you know, specifically if we're referring to growth and service lines, or we're talking about communication types of things, but. When we talk about how we want to be specific, these are some things to think about, okay, when we form these goals. Are these goals that, for instance, we're trying to define something within a primary service area or a secondary service area? Do we have goals around maybe market share or volumes or demographics? And sometimes these goals can be a combination of some of these criteria. And then as I've mentioned, you know, maybe there are goals around, okay, we've done a um, a patient engagement score and we we have a baseline and we know we need to increase that by you know 15 percent within the next year and so it allows you to really focus on okay how are we going to get those numbers up it's the same kind of thing that we often do when as organizations we look at our you know patient engagement scores and we look at how we're going to increase the patient experience and we we form goals around around that as well so you know, again, this is kind of more from a business standpoint, but we, we look at things like downstream revenue. Well, you know, we know there are various service lines, for instance, that maybe um, on a surface, maybe don't immediately contribute to the bottom line. But maybe they do when it comes to that they're going to increase certain ancillary types of services, as an example. And so those are reasons uh, why you might invest your time and, and, and money. Again, when you form goals, you know, we have, you know, goals as an organization, you certainly want to reach um, a, a wide variety of different demographics and payer mixes and all those sort of things. But you might have different goals based on different types of activities. So as an example, you know, um, certainly if your goal is to, you know, increase volumes in a particular area that you just 
that you know maybe it's your screen your health screenings and those types of things and where your main concern is just making sure that you are caring for the community and you're getting as many people in regardless of ability to pay and all of that those are excellent objectives and so you know you don't necessarily maybe need to focus on on payer mix for that idea but maybe there are other areas where you know that um, based on reimbursement or whatever it might be that um, that you know that even though you're going to be open to all different peer mixes, in terms of how much emphasis or the types of communications or your types of messages, um, those might be different uh, to different segments of that audience. And I'll give you a couple of examples here of how we break up those goals in just a moment. So again, as we look at um, website analytics, again, that kind of forms more in terms of uh, communication goal, but... but there is so much information that's available for you to look at that's free of data for you to look at um, that, that just so many people don't use. It just can tell you, you know, how many people are going on your website, what pages are going on, how much time are they spending on it, um, how, you know, all, all of those sort of things that, that can tell you a lot and you can form goals around those. Um, we could do a whole new webinar on, on on this next topic, which is just your EHR data as well, in terms of how you're using your EHR system um, to communicate and such as well. But there, then there are ways that you can, you know, from a goal standpoint of, of measure percentage of engagement or people that are reading things or responding to things and all those sort of things. So, um, but anyway, those reason I share these is that these are just as we're kind of forming goals that there's just so many different ways to, to approach that in terms of measuring uh, your success. So just kind of as a little background, I've used this terminology of goals versus objectives and, you know, different people define this differently, but what I look at goals as kind of more of a, a general statement of, you know, what we want to achieve. They still need to be relevant and realistic and achievable. The objectives part, they get into a little bit more specific. That's again, where they're, you know, we kind of talked about the SMART uh, acronym specific and measurable, maybe time bound. So they're, they're again, we can measure that more to know whether or not we actually move the needle. Whereas when we make general statements about, you know, we want to, uh, we want to be the best, or we want to, you know, whatever it might be, those are admirable goals. But how do we know whether or not we achieve them? And just to kind of emphasize that point, I'm just going to play you this video. Um, you might know Simon. Um, he's a uh, national uh, speaker as well, but it kind of gives some insights to the point that I just made. How do you make strategic thinking more implementation friendly? Language. Uh, strategic thinking can be all more implementation friendly when you use words that you understand. It's amazing to me how often we read strategies that are incomprehensible, you know, uh, to be the preeminent supplier, you know, we're going to, I mean, what, I mean, these are, these are things that you can't do, you know, based on what metric, you know, we want to be the best. That's your strategy. Like that's not a strategy. That's nothing, right? You know, we want to be the, the, we want to be ranked number one. What revenues, profit, quality, customer satisfaction, loyalty? Uh, what I, I have, you know, this, I mean, it's complete nonsense, you know. And so, the more specific a strategy can be, the clearer the language can be, the more implementable it can be. I'm a great believer that if you speak like a scientist, only scientists will understand you. But if you speak like a truck driver, both truck drivers and scientists will understand you. You know. And the amazing thing is, if you actually speak like a scientist. Even a lot of the scientists don't understand you. The point is, use very simple terminology that somebody who's not in your industry, who doesn't know your business, would understand what you're trying to do. And if that's the, the basis of the language that you choose to use, that anyone can understand what you're attempting to do, and if you started someone tomorrow, they would be able to take the reins and go because it's so crystal clear. That's the standard that we need to use inside our own organizations. When the language is clear, when the language is specific, when the language is simple, it's easy. It's, it's easy to implement, right? Off to the races you go. You know? So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that we speak like truck drivers, <laughs> but, but, but I think you get the idea in terms of the, uh, you know, the, the simple language um, that we want to be able to, to share. And I think we're kind of known in healthcare, obviously, we have a lot of acronyms too, don't we, that we kind of just 
speak past each other as well. So just kind of being cognizant of that. So, so again, um, in this context of, again, we think about what the purpose of this today's webinar is. And again, it's deciding where to focus your um, communications efforts. And the correlation, again, of why we're talking so much here about goals is that the obvious thing is we focus our activities on where our goals are, you know? Um, and so that's why, that's why I'm, you know, hitting this so hard because once you really do that and you have that consensus, then it becomes, you know, a little bit more natural. Uh, one second here. Oops, bear with me here. So here's a couple of examples. So I was kind of talking about that goal versus objective. So this is, you know, a little bit more revenue specific types of things, but you can use the same concept wherever you, you know, in, in, in many different areas, but you might have a goal to say, if you have the luxury of that, you actually have in a rural facility, which is not very common, but that you have um, uh, an orthopedic surgeon who's, who's, who's doing surgeries at your organization. Okay. Well, obviously your goal is you want to increase outpatient volumes. Okay. That's great but let's get more specific. So, th so this is a sample objective. And again, as specific as possible is the best. And this is just an example. You wanna increase outpatient procedures by 4% by the end of 2023 compared to the previous year in the secondary service area with adults between the ages of 45 and 55 as measured by EHR data. So let's just break that out for a second, just for kind of illustration point here. So the reason that, again, when you kind of look at the reason that I'm sharing this is that you're deciding how to use limited resources. Um, and you're also looking at maybe not only how do I use those resources, but what techniques sometimes or what messages will I use? So as an example here, um, you can see here the delineation between the secondary that we're actually focused on the secondary service area. So if you kind of go back and you look at some of the upfront things that I talked about, if you really have a great idea of kind of where your patients are coming from, as an example, and maybe you see, well, we're really kind of where we should be in our primary service area, but that secondary service area, we we believe we're, we're underperforming in that area. Well, for one thing, then, you know, certainly as you look at your goals, whatever activities you're going to have, you're going to specifically focus or you're going to place more of your emphasis on that secondary service area. So it might be, for instance, as simple as you're deciding where you're going to do community education sessions. And if you have that goal as a secondary service area, well, maybe you're really not going to do as many things within your, your city proper. Or, um, you know, or, you know, if you are doing different communications or advertising, things like that, um, you know, to, to really be thinking about that as well. Or maybe that affects you know, your relationship that you have with referral sources and what referral sources are you working out in that secondary service area. And then again, just as an example here for this particular objective, we've looked at, we've really narrowed down um, that uh, that age category, okay? And you might, you might narrow it by gender, whatever you might, whatever you might do. Well, this kind of comes into, if you really are specific about that, and then you're thinking about, okay, who am I reaching? How am I reaching them? Um, you know, even though maybe you're, um, you know, you're certainly not turning away the opportunity to serve people of other demographics, um, but when you look at the emphasis that you're going to place, if you're really focused on that 45 to 55, as an example, well, maybe that means we're going to focus more on, um, you know, that demographic in terms of programming that we do or locations that we might go to or, or whatever it might be. So, and it helps you to kind of really figure out what strategies are going to work the best and try instead of trying to be, you know, um, everything to everyone. So that's, you know, that's kind of the general idea. So, so again, it's, it's making a plan that, that drives that strategy. So you're determining, okay, what are the areas that are maybe more important than others based on certain criteria. So I'm going to talk in just a moment about what that means. And again, I've kind of hit a little bit on the importance of really seeking that, that buy-in from leadership. So this is where I mentioned, you know, at the beginning of the presentation that it's about you having a process and a plan. 
and it doesn't matter if it's similar to this one or whatever, but it's but it's an approach that you take. And I just a, a couple takeaways that I want to have on this is just similar to to uh, to what we talked about here is that you kind of see as you go through this this process of determining how you're going to use your marketing resources, your communications resources, is you're starting in that stage one where you're gathering a lot of information. You're not just shooting from the hip. You're absorbing. You're learning. Um, you're understanding that context, you know, and even, you know, one of the most underlooked parts that I see is a lot of organizations is the competitive analysis part that's listed under stage one. That doesn't always need to be some big formal thing. It's a matter of really taking the time or having someone else take the time for you to, to look at what you might consider your competitors and what services are they offering and what are their messages and 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 are they are they doing some things that are that are maybe considered a competitive advantage in terms of the services or their messages or are there maybe some opportunities that we see that that maybe there's some uh, weaknesses or some some gaps that we can fill in the in the community and really kind of just taking that step back and doing that sometimes it's a matter of even you know and I understand a lot of us are visible in our community so maybe it's harder to do. But if you do have, for instance, you know, and I know a lot of us we're working in rural health, so we don't we we are we don't have you know multiple organizations within our within our our community, but we also still are competing with maybe a larger facility an hour away, or maybe with another you know rural hospital, you know. All, but anyway, taking the opportunity to actually walk through those those facilities and um, kind of getting a gauge of you know what's the culture, what's the experience. Uh, those types of things it, it you you really just learn a lot um about you know their their whole culture and and things that you sort of pick up so so anyway um you know not to go through all of this but then you know you do that uh, background and then you know you're you're getting to a point where you're looking at what those priority priorities are and then you're forming a communication plan and that communication plan again we hit pretty hard we're talking about those objectives and strategies and then the the last stage is then is okay, you know, what are we going to do to, to, to implement that? Oftentimes it has nothing to do with advertising. It might be having to do with um, different types of communications or relationships, referral rates, relationships, all kinds of things. But again, it, it's just, I guess the, the takeaway that I want to give to you here is that, um, it, you know, when we look at, okay, how are we spending our time and what are we focusing on? It's like anything else of so just trying your best. And I know we're all super busy, but to, not, you know, maybe be as impulsive about things and really taking the opportunity to, to, to step back. And, you know, it, I'm, you know, personally, I kind of always preach the, the mantra of do a finite amount of things and do them very well, you know, um, that, you know, especially when we have limited resources in rural health, we just cannot do everything. We can't be everything to everyone. But if you try to do everything, you know, then you're going to end up honestly with just a lot of average types of things. You're going to end up with kind of vanilla where if you can really focus your emphasis on, on a limited number of things and do them well, that's where you're going to really make more of an, of an impact. So this concept here of service line prioritization, you could use the same concept whether or not it's things that you're specifically advertising or communicating or just, you know, looking at ways in which you're going to make priorities in your communications um, plan. And let me give you a couple of examples of what I'm talking about here. So these are different things where, okay, the, the exercise here is how do I determine if I'm just looking at, let's say, for instance, that I know that we need to build more volumes in primary care. I know that we need to increase our reputation. I know that, you know, we have a swing bed program that we need to focus on. Um, we need to we need to build uh, more volumes in uh, general surgery. If we do have some other specialists that are coming in and they're performing surgery there, we need to increase those volumes. We need to um, make our lab uh, busier. Uh, we need to, you know, the list goes on, right? And And so... As we look at those, and, and we're not saying that all of those things are not important, but in terms of determining what's more important or what kind of a priority, you have to look at this from 
almost like a scientific level a little bit. You kind of balance the, the art and the science of communication. So as an example, when you're looking at this diff, these different priorities, you look and say, okay, <clears throat> you know, does it increase the image or the goodwill of your community? Is it something, honestly, that's really ready to be promoted or, or built? I mean, oftentimes I'll, I'll see, oh, you know, we really need to increase our urgent care volumes. And then when we start to look into it a little bit more, we learn that, well, actually there's a customer service issue right now, or or there's a scheduling issue and it takes the, you know this long to get in, you know, then that means that those things aren't necessarily market ready. You know, is it profitable? That isn't again, always a criteria. It's one of the criteria. Um, and you have to weigh that against, you know, what your priorities are. Um, is there a potential to increase market share? Is there something for, when, relating to differentiation? Is there something here that makes you different or better, if you will, than others? And how can and how can we communicate that? Are there some things that are going on in the market right now, like you know that a competitor is going to be building a new clinic or a new service, and we need to capture things, you know, before they do? Um, what's our patient experience, and do we need? Is it good? Is it bad? Do we need to? You know, again, my my point here is that if we need to make some improvements in our patient experience, we're not going to improve it by communicating. We're going to improve it by including increasing our patient experience and then communicating our good experience. So the point that I'm making here is that you might look at this list and you'll say, yes, Mike, they're all important. But the exercise here is to say, how do we compare them with one another? And so this is you know, this is a really simple form and you can do, you know, do your own form of however you want to do it. We've had some that have been a little bit more sophisticated where we weigh them and every, but weigh them out against each other. But the, the, the importance is that you go through an exercise where, and again, you may or may not have these different service lines available to you, but whatever those are, or if they're service lines, or frankly, they're just priorities that you're being asked to focus on. Then you look at, as you can see across the top column here, we just listed, you know, some of those criteria. So, you know, and you may list a number of them or, but it's the idea of, you might look at this and say, well, as an organization, and again, this is where it kind of comes back to that buy-in from your leadership is your leadership may say, well, based on where we as are as an organization, we need to focus on the, on these three criteria to determine, you know, what's, what's going to be. Um, you know, the most important. And then, you know, what this is showing is you, you kind of give it a ranking or a scale. You provide some kind of an exercise to it to determine that. And what we found effective is that you have different people in your organization do this exercise independently of one another. Because, and, and then you compare the results because that's oftentimes where, when I kind of go back and I talk about that buy-in uh, from from uh, from leadership is that oftentimes there can be you know difference of opinion between different people and different members of leadership and so you have to really resolve those things because you know someone comes to you and says you know we really need to uh i don't know we're gonna we need to open a, a sleep a sleep clinic we really see that as an opportunity and um um and someone else says well before we do that we really need to increase our you know, primary care visits or, you know, wh whatever it might be. But it's just, again, you see the point here of and of having a consensus in your organization of how do you rank those things? What do you, you know, and then and then the key to that is if you have differences of philosophy or differences in agreement, you resolve those. Because then you think about this exercise that I'm talking about and you take that ahead five steps, um, you know, and if you kind of go back to this chart here, like, Oftentimes, I'll see organizations where they have a particular issue that they're trying to, you know, trying to solve or something that they're trying to grow, and they'll go right here to what we call stage four, which is let's go do some advertising or let's go do some communication or what have you. And they haven't even done any of these steps before to even know how important is it in the first place? How does it compare to others? You know, all those types of things. And so, um, so you know, it's just so important. So that again, kind of coming back to that. How do you determine, you know, where you're devoting your resources? It's a it's a complex process. So, so as we look at, okay, you have 
you know, you kind of looked at these different service lines or priorities and how are you ranking them or what's, you know, a lot of things will come out from there. This is, you know, um, a philosophy that you might consider. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly like this. The, the, it's more of the concept behind it that's the most important. And so um, one approach here is that as you kind of go through that exercise of looking at your service lines, looking at your tiers, those types of things, and remember that mantra that I said about doing a limited amount of things and doing them well, is that you break these things into tiers. And that what you see here is the 60, 30, 10. What this means, you know, from a conceptual standpoint is that if something is listed, for instance, in a tier one, that means that 60% of all of your resources, whether or not those resources are is money, is time, what have you, um, are devoted to tier one. And 30% of your resources are things that are listed in tier two and 10% in tier three. Now, let's say, for instance, you have 20 things that you're trying to decide. Okay, I know I have to focus on these 20 things for the year, which is a lot, by the way. Well, again, you may only have three things under uh, tier one, uh, 10 things under tier two, and seven things under tier three, okay? And you can kind of do the math to see, okay, so if there's only three things, for instance, listed under tier one, it's devoting 60% of my resources, and you have a consensus that you formed within your organization of this concept, then that's gold. I mean, that tells you a lot, right? I mean, it tells you that, okay, this is how this is how I plan my year. This is how I plan my day. And what it means is that it doesn't necessarily mean that you're saying no to other things. But again, it's about how are you placing your, your resources and your emphasis? So, so as an example, on a more specific perspective, like, you know, let's say that under tier one that, you know, you're going to be increasing your image of your organization and you're going to be promoting primary care and um, increasing volumes in general surgery. Okay, those are the three things in tier one. And then under tier two, you have all the different, you know, it could be, you know, internal communications, it could be a lot of different things. But as you look at, okay, and a lot of times in organizations, we're fortunate to even have a communications person. Um, oftentimes, if there's someone that's doing that, it's someone who also has about two other jobs, so you can't really do all of this anyway. But, but again, you know, I, I hopefully it's coming clear that, you know, if you have 10 things under tier two, well, you're taking that 30% now and you're, and you're spreading it between. So you're, you're going to, you're maybe going to touch on some things, you know, but you're not going to place as much emphasis on them. And I'm just sharing with you as experience that once you kind of master that sort of concept, you actually give yourself a little bit of breathing room and a little bit of less stress reduction. Again, the key being that you're building that, um, that consensus from the top. And now that doesn't mean that priorities don't change throughout the year and they do, and you'll have new opportunities. So it's not like you're saying, well, you know, it was in the plan and boy, we have this new opportunity. I can't do it because it's not in the plan, but you, you go back and you reevaluate um, what that new opportunity is against other priorities and say, okay, well, we either need to increase our resources or we have to do something we have to do less of something else. So, so it's just kind of going through that that um, that process. So before I kind of um, you know open it up for questions and things, I just want to take a couple minutes and just kind of um, segue a little bit to you know in that chart that I talked about before, where we talk about the you know the planning process, getting to forming those objectives and all of that, and then that last part was um, okay, how are we implementing uh, those strategies that we have? And just, you know, a couple of kind of broader things that I'd like to just share with you is that, you know, we're used to, for instance, particularly in rural, in rural health, we think about a lot of what we would call traditional media, you know, print and radio, and hopefully you're not doing much in yellow pages anymore, but some of these things, and I'm not, I'm not at all saying that these are not important because they, they often are, but, um, but what I would say is that there's an evolution of communications to things that are what are considered more digital. And and sometimes there's sort of a myth in, in rural health in particular that, well, because we maybe have limited, in some areas we have limited broadband band experience, uh, exposure, those types of things that, that digital doesn't work. And I think it depends on how one defines digital because um, um, 
to be able the 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 idea of digital marketing means that you can target and specifically reach certain demographics on a very limited budget in a very efficient way. So so historically, as an example, we think of digital media as social media. Social media is definitely an important part of our communications mix, not just the what we kind of call organic social media, but there are ways that you can advertise through social media. It's an effect, it's an effective technique. But there are a lot of other ways that even five years ago we had no uh, ability to do this. So there are things certainly in terms of how we do our websites and how people search for us and whether or not they search for us through voice or through words, all kinds of things. This is a whole separate, you know, whole separate webinar. But the area that I want to just focus on for a second is this area called um, streaming video and audio. So again, certainly know that not everyone in particular rural markets has access to, you know, to cable TV and things like that. But the data show that um, there's a high volume of rural care healthcare uh, residents who do and who access uh, programming through their Roco stick or you know a, a streaming television and things like that. And so when I was kind of talking about you know uh, you know five ten years ago where for instance as a rural healthcare organization you would never in your wildest dreams be able to think about well I'm going to do a television ad well it. Now you can. It's more of like how are my, how am I using video in a way, and how am I using that video to communicate through streaming television, and and the point that I just want to make with you here because it's a whole another topic is that um, it's just a matter of that what I'm trying to communicate here is that we do open ourselves up to consider that there are new approaches and new ways in which we can target uh, specific audiences in a in a pretty cost effective way and that. As a rural healthcare organization, um, we can compete with the larger. Can be effective, um, and there's that opportunity uh, to do that. So I've hit a little bit, uh, quite a bit on you know having management, you know, really own uh, your plan, and I would say part of that is that when you have those goals and that that marketing plan or that communications plan you are reviewing how you're doing against those metrics on a pretty regular basis and with your leadership team. But you're using that opportunity um, to use it as a management tool. It's not to say, you know, to go in to say, oh, look how well we did, but here's where we did well, or here's where we didn't. And in the areas that we didn't do well, we didn't achieve our goals. Why didn't we achieve our goals? And let's look at this together as, as leaders and say, okay, did it have to do with, our communication techniques? Was it an operational issue? Uh, was the goal unrealistic? But just again, using that as a management tool to, um, to maybe um, evaluate our approach and update our approach as, as needed. But we can't do that without actually having a dashboard of data and comparing on a, on a periodic basis against <clears throat> what our original goals were. So before we kind of open it up for questions, um, kind of want to go back to our poll question here. And it's how confident do you feel now <laughs> um, in developing business and communication goals and priorities for your organization as part of your annual communications plan? Yep, and I got this poll entered in along with all of our post polling, so I don't have to pull up this one and then the last ones. So this is the last polling you'll be doing for this session, I promise. So I'll get that going here and I'll give you a, a minute or two to fill that out because there are a few of them. Okay. Yeah, and I can go ahead and run through those just so you make sure you see them. So the first question wants to know about your understanding of the communication planning process and who to engage in the effort. And always our scales, confident, somewhat confident, neutral, somewhat unconfident, and unconfident. Question two is, um, we want to know your confidence and your understanding of how to form measurable business and communication goals. Same scale there. Question three, we would like to know your confidence in understanding of the components necessary for hospital communications in 2023. And question four is um, 
letting us know about the how you will apply the knowledge gained from this educational training to improve your organization's communications. And then that last question there is the one that I believe that Mike posed is how confident do you feel in developing a business communication goals and values for your organization as a part, a part of your annual communications plan? Oh, you're really making people work, huh? We are. <laughs> Look at this, huh? Excellent. Yeah, got some great responses there. Yeah. So we would like, thank you so much for completing that. I know that was a lot of questions all at one time, um, but it really does help us to measure that knowledge gain. Um, but we, now we would like to open it up. Any questions, any comments about what you've heard? Did you find it helpful? Was it a review of kind of what you knew already? Um, you know, any, any feedback along those lines? Uh, this is Kelly Brugan. I'll say it was very helpful, uh, especially because I'm our new director of communications, okay. uh, for lack of a better term, grants, marketing. Basically, if it involves a communication, I'm in charge. <laughs> okay, and we're sure. trying to um, develop a plan. Mm -hmm. And so this is actually exactly what I've been needing. And I have taken a lot of notes today. And mm -hmm. I'm very, very appreciative of everything um, that you've shared because I was kind of a little rudderless um, <laughs> in terms of just kind of where to start and what to do. That, um, makes, my, that makes my day. Thank you. You're, you. you're very welcome. I'm, I'm kind of a new to this. Um, it's not necessarily, it's kind of my second profession. Um, and, you know, I don't have a ton of education in it, except for what I've given myself. And so sure, things like sure. this are particularly valuable. So I really do appreciate mm -hmm. it. And um, again, took a ton of notes, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of screenshots. And if you want to share your presentation with us, that would be wonderful. So I can share it with our CEO as well. Yeah, I'm happy to. I think Kim and Caleb, you have it already that you can share with participants, right? So absolutely, absolutely. We're, we'll post it along with um, the recording um, on um, the, our website. Okay. You'll be sent a link when that's all posted and ready to go. So absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for that, Kelly. Several <laughs> comments in the chat, thought it was great. A lot of helpful information, very helpful. So uh, any any questions that anyone has? Any you know anything we want us to expand upon or anything like that? I assume this sounds fairly familiar. That you're I know we're all in different roles here, but um, jumping from priority to priority. So hopefully it did resonate with you in some way. I know that's what it was like for me. <laughs> yeah. Mike, I appreciate it. I think you did a great job, very succinct, very, you know, kind of putting that process together, what it looks like, and it makes sense, you know, to um, be really, you know, proficient in one area versus trying to just be, uh, you know, have a little bit of everything. So, yeah, appreciate that. With that, um, we will um, sign off for now. We um, I thank you all for joining us and being here with us. If you do think of anything in the meantime, you can always uh, shoot me or Caleb uh, an email. If you don't have Mike's direct email, we'll be happy to get back in touch with him and his team there. Um, we will have one more presentation next week. I believe, I believe that's Brian um, presenting on the Behavioral and Health Toolkit. I think actually um, Amy will, she was, but we're actually... Amy's going to present it the next week. Okay. So, yeah. Yep. All right. yep. Amy okay. Yeager, well, we'll start. see Amy again next week. Yeah. That'll be perfect on that behavioral health toolkit, which we're excited to um, hear more about as well. So um, more information to come next week. So we thank you all for this for this time today, and we'll see y'all all soon. Okay. Sounds Bye. good. Thank you, everyone. Take care.